Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7 update 1.43. Now in today's video I'm going to give you a money build for the Lancer Evo 9 which came along with this update. It's very heavily influenced from my Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 3 build which came out last year and that car went on to win my post launch car of the year for 2023. So taking heavily influenced from that one, one of my overall favourite builds in the entirety of GT7, let's see how the Evo 9 handles it. Now to begin with we're going to head into the prices. This is a rare occasion where there's actually a car that's able to be bought in two different places both in the used car dealership as well as brand central. There's not really much in it whether you go for the used or the brand new. I would personally gravitate towards the brand new one just because you get an absolutely clean slate with the vehicle and it is all about putting your own miles on. So 92k from the used, 100k from the brand central. In terms of the PP rating, it sits at a rather low 506.66. 277 brake horsepower, four wheel drive, so absolutely perfect for the drive out of corners, turbocharged and a little bit weighty at 1420 kilograms. However, we are gonna transform this car completely. First up is gonna be the wide body modification. Ensure you've got this installed. Now, I don't know if it makes an overall difference, but it is just my personal preference. I like the way it looks. In terms of the wheels though, again, completely personal preference. So put your own wheels on, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. For the size, I've just gonna size up just for, again, more aesthetic purposes, but then it's gonna be rim width wide and offset wide. Again, it does affect the PP rating. Next up, is the custom part so i've gone for a front type b bumper on the sides i've again gone for type b and then onto the rear again is type b and then onto the wing is going to be a type a again allows a bit more adjustments in terms of the aero we also have a roll cage type c installed once again these do typically affect the pp rating in terms of tires it's racing hards fully customizable suspension is going to be set to 100 at the front 115 rear five anti-roll bar front and eight rear compression is 40 across expansion 50 across natural frequencies free front and 315 rear negative camera angle is 2.04 both toe angle zero front and 0.10 inwards at the rear fully customizable differential set to five across the board so all three of these categories set to five torque veteran center diff it is complete personal preference i leave mine at 35 65 fully customizable racing transmission set it to 270 and then in terms of the manual adjustments ensure that they match up first 2554-87 1727-129 1998-172, and then final is 4.519. We're going to have 50 ballast on this with a positioning of minus 47. No power restriction, however, on the fully customizable ECU, set this to 99. Downforce at the front is 50 and then 290 at the rear. High RPM turbocharger with anti-lag set to strong. Racing intercooler, racing air cleaner, silencer, exhaust manifold, brake system, racing, brake pads, racing, brake controller. Again, I do recommend having to do on-fly adjustments, racing clutch and flywheel, carbon propeller shaft, all of the permanent upgrades as well. So we are running this at pretty much maximum potential bar a 1% uh, decrease in terms of the ECU itself. So there you go. That is a build relatively straightforward. In terms of the event itself though, you do want to have your difficulty set to easy. The main reason for this is it's going to allow us to do a stop and wait trick at the end of the event that we're mainly going to be focusing on. So in terms of the event, head over into Europe and Le Mans, go for the middle event, which is the WTC 700, the one with the maximum reward of 550k. Again, once you're in there, just go ahead and enter it. So let's talk about the car itself. Like I mentioned, this takes heavy inspiration from my Lancer Evo 3 build, which I did release in kind of the first half of last year that ended up being my overall favorite money grinder for the entirety of 2023 i racked up thousands of miles on that thing 
always loved driving it and thankfully that build pretty much passes itself over to the Lancer Evo 9 with very minimal adjustments. The only real changes is a set of mediums to hards and also a 1% decrease in the ECU power. Apart from that they are pretty much matching builds and pretty much run entirely the same. They're absolute grip monsters, they're fantastic out of corners, they're okay on fuel, that's probably the only downside but these are very drivable cars which anyone from a beginner up to a complete seasoned vet could quite easily drive and have a great time with. I absolutely love the Lancer Evo I guess line of vehicles at this point majority of them are fantastic. So let's talk strategy because this is where things are going to carry on as normal. Fuel Mix 6 like most road cars is going to be the call of the day. After that you just want to crack on with the event as per usual. Again we're running the AI on easy for a very simple reason because we're going to be taking advantage of that 30 minute timer. So although a lot of people will tell you you know go ahead and do the extra lap and such most of the time especially with cars like this that are so so good in these 700 categories you you will pretty much never run that extra lap. You'll probably get six laps done or seven laps at most and then just stop, wait and let the timer tick down. So in terms of the, I guess, overall uh, clean race bonus and such like that, you don't need to worry about losing it. The only time you will is if you run the yellow flags. And I'm going to show you a bit of an example of this during this video. So as always, once you get to the second lap, you're going to be wanting to watch out for the weather radar. Apart from that, you should be absolutely golden to get to the end. In terms of taking lead, very, very easy easily did this before the end of the big straight. At this point it's all about building the lead up. Lap 2 you want to begin to watch that weather, weather radar should I say. Um, as you can see by the time we got to the end of lap 2 rain did start coming in. Now at this point I'm going to try and beat the rain, I'm going to pit in and I'm going to cover it off with a set of intermediates or heavy wets. Again just keep an eye on the radar and you can quite easily predict it. This car because of its uh, PP rating can run on the racing hards the intermediates and the wets. They're the only compound of tyres you're going to need. So just ensure that you've got them. Typical with most of these 700 builds, you will need to have that wet set there as most of the time it will start to downpour. It's very rare you actually get an overall dry race. It's a very, very rare occasion when it does happen. So I'm going to pit at the end of lap two. I did have enough fuel for another lap, but we're covering off the rain. So again, we're going to go onto the intermediates to cover that off, fill the car to full and just get on with the race as normal. Some of the AI though would did get caught out and didn't bother pitting, meaning they're going to be easy prey come later on in the event for being overlapped, which is, you know, at the point where, you know, you've definitely won it. So eventually the rain did leave, as you can see, it's just going off the radar now, but quite quickly, another formation of rain did come in and this one was much heavier. So again, it was all about predicting and I decided, you know what, it's very, very heavy. Heavy wets are definitely going to be the call of the day. So at this point, again, I'm kind of pitting in rather quite early although I'm on the intermediates and such I'm just going to get myself boxed in get some fuel in the car get the heavy wets on to cover off the very very wet track and ensure that I've got the maximum amount of grip possible as you can see here the AI did get caught out a lot of them didn't pit during the first batch of rain at that point they were just absolutely sitting ducks as you can see a lot of yellow flags out as well so if you do see that just be very mindful not to be kind of overtaking or catching the AI out there because there is a high chance that the game will just penalize you and that clean race bonus is gone. That is the only way to lose it. So, like I mentioned, it was time to put the heavy wets on. Again, we've got a really heavy downpour. The intermediates are almost no use at this point, and I need a bit of fuel anyway just to complete one final lap. So, that was the plan here. However, you will see it didn't really go to plan considering we'd had a very heavy downpour, but it passed over very, very quickly. So, full wet compound of tyres are now on the car. Again, we're going to just splash some fuel in to kill some extra time. However, as you're going to see, the sun has started to shine and as soon as we leave the pits it is beginning to dry already it was kind of a quick flash in the pan in terms of the overall conditions so we eventually got around to finishing up lap six we've got a decent gap of over three minutes to the second ai and around about two and a half minutes on the timer at this point we're just going to sit at the edge of the line stop and wait this is why i recommend the easy difficulty 
because again it's all about earning money it's not about how hard you're going to be uh, in terms of beating the ai as soon as it ticks down cross the line and that is it job done so overall the lancer evo 9 is fantastic and carries on like most of the lancer evolution line where they are absolutely brilliant for that 700 pp range of grinding again there is other events you can use like the one uh, over at bathurst as well which i do find very good and nice slight change from Le Mans. so if you want to use it there you can do it as well as all the other 700 events in terms of completion times 30 minutes one second point two one five obviously six laps completed with a seven minute final lap unfortunately due to the rain i couldn't really kind of gauge the one lap pace so here it's saying the fastest was a 425.142 but again that's just way off due to the wet weather and such so we're not getting a proper true look at its one lap potential but it's probably going to be in those low four minute range so overall in terms of the payout itself this is a bit you guys are going to want to know it's going to be the typical 800k plus per every 30 minutes now the best thing about this one once you've got a car you're comfortable with which is for me the lancers whether that's my evo 3 or well now the evo 9 we can just tick over and instantly retry it and again it's that kind of event where it's so dynamic that it mixes up each and every time and again like i mentioned if you do want to go to bathurst or mount panorama and grind there or any of the 700 events for a change this car will absolutely nail all of those events big thank you to all of my channel members jro 49 victory 2fa mailton louis vieira old school gamers crazy cobra carl wire phil wilmot dominic sailor dan sean and chris 75572 thank you for your continued support it means an absolute world to me and thank you to you guys watching let me know what you think of the lancer evo 9 down below i think this is certainly going to be up there in terms of my top 10 cars of 2024 definitely the best car we've had all year so far and i've got a feeling it'll stay right high up on that list no matter what other cars we get in the game thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one take care guys peace